Okay, fun with a spring gun is the name of this problem. So here we have a spring gun. It's used to fire a solid sphere that has a mass of 0.15 kilograms straight up in the air. So there's a little illustration of it. The, we know the spring constant is 1600 newtons per meter. We're going to compress that spring 0.11 meters from the equilibrium position where that's zero. That's right here. And it's then released. The ball reaches a maximum height of H max right there above the equilibrium position. There's no air resistance, never touches the side of the gun. Assume that all the movements occur in a straight line up and down. It makes it pretty simple. So find the muzzle velocity of the gun. Well, this is a great opportunity to use work energy and conservation of energy in this case because there's no air resistance and no friction from the side. So we got three places. I'm going to label this like location A, this location B, and this location C. Just to differentiate between the three of them. So this is where I have a certain amount of energy there, certain here. We got this is our height. Now here, this, this Y at A, that is 0.11 meters down, so it's a negative 0.11 meters. So when using energy heights, you have some zero height. Anything below that's a negative height. It's less than zero. Anything above it, we don't know. So we're saying that y at b is zero. And y at c is the maximum height. This is y max. They call it h max. I'm going to call it y max. There, we got that figured out. What else do we know about this? Well, down here, the velocity at A, that's zero. At max height, the velocity there at C, that's got to be zero. To get to the maximum height, it can't still be going up. So it had to have stopped briefly. And here we got another velocity. Whatever, this is velocity at B, it's not zero. We don't know what that is. Matter of fact, that, that's what we're trying to find here, muzzle velocity, the ball right when it leaves the muzzle. So we want to find that first. So since the springs and gravity are conservative forces, we can say that all that energy at A is going to be equal to all that energy at B. There's no work being done, so I didn't include any work in that. What kind of energy do I have here? I've got gravitational potential because I got a height. I have no kinetic, but I also have spring, like the spring energy. That delta x of the spring is 0 0.11 meters. That's how much the spring was compressed, delta y, we could call it. So I've got us, there's spring energy, ug, no k, there's no kinetic. And then here at b, it's moving, I've got kinetic. I, there's no height, so the gravitational energy, that's going to be zero because y at b equals zero. And then spring energy, it's when the spring is at equilibrium position, so there's no spring energy at b either because x equals zero, or the y I called it, because that compression of the spring is zero. So, the spring energy, the gravitational energy, is going to turn all into kinetic energy at that point based on where I chose height to be zero. So we plug those in. Spring energy is one half k x squared. It's in the y direction, so I'm going to call it y squared plus m g y. So that's the y for the spring. This is y at position a, and that's going to equal one half m velocity at b squared. I mean, it might be a little big. All right, looks like it's pretty easy. We just plug in the numbers and work this out. So we can move that half and then m to the other side, but I'm going to plug in the numbers first. So we've got 1 half, 1600, make sure our units all match, it's newtons per meter, and 0 0.11 squared is the compression of the spring, plus 
mass of this ball 0 0.15 acceleration to gravity is 9.8 the height here is negative it's a negative 0 0.11 meters because it's below our zero below the zero so we have a negative height and that's one half of 0 0.15 times v squared v at b and now we just do some algebra plug that into our equation and we get an answer and we plug that into our calculator and we'll get that the velocity is 11.27 we've got two significant digits so 11 meters per second is how fast that's going now what's the maximum height that that ball reaches well now we can just go from anywhere the energy is conserved all the way along so we had energy a equals energy b well that also equals energy c that also is going to be the energy at c so we can go a to c or b to c it doesn't matter it's the same amount of energy but when we do that let's try to make sure we don't use the rounded number if we're going to use the energy here but i already have that all worked out for the energy at a so i'm just going to go a to c and i can squeeze that in right here that energy at A is going to equal the energy at C. So I've got the 1 half KY squared plus MGY at A. That's right from this because there's spring and gravity at A. And now at C, what do I got? There's no spring. It's not touching the spring. There's no kinetic. It's got a velocity of 0. But it's got UG. There's UG at C potential energy of gravitation and so that's one half k y squared plus m g y a equals m g y at c which is our y max above the muzzle because our zero point was there plug in our numbers and calculate it out again one half sixteen hundred point one one squared plus zero point one five times 9.8 negative 0 0.11 is our height is going to equal the 0 0.15 9.8 y at c which is our y max oh you can barely see that all that typed in you orient that and let's calculate that out and when we calculate all that out we get that y max which is y c is 6.475 meters which we got two sig figs so 6.5 meters is our answer there that's how we work out that problem hope that helped again just conservation of energy